Researchers in an isolated cave make discovery that could rewrite the history books. Archaeological finds have brought many over to the Lubombo Mountains in South Africa. There lies a great deal of evidence from humanity's earliest days. However, these artifacts aren't found in the ruins of grand primitive cities. Instead, the deep and winding caves that serve as many early humans' homes were the focus of Dr. Wadley and her colleagues. One particular spot, known as Border Cave, led them into uncharted archaeological territory. Wadley, an archaeologist at the Wits University's Evolutionary Studies Institute in Johannesburg, was supposed to have seen it all. She'd received enough citations to put her in the top 1% of researchers, not just in archaeology, but across all fields. But her career would be transformed in the Lubombo Mountains. Many archaeologists have studied the area around the Border Cave because of the well-preserved record of human life spanning nearly 230,000 years. As a matter of fact, a famed digger surveyed it all all the way back in 1940. The influential Raymond Dart led the expedition and made headlines for finding human bone shards deep within the caverns. But after recovering these remains, as well as an early counting tool, Dart left many stones in the border cave unturned. But in the summer of 2020, Dr. Wadley's team wouldn't make the same mistake. The odds were against them, of course. With an elevation of 2,000 feet and a length of 30 miles, Border Cave was hard to reach and harder to survey. However, when Dr. Wadley stepped in with her fellow researchers, she noticed something rather striking along the ground. It was something that didn't grow naturally within the cave. Within the Border Cave, Dr. Wadley noticed patterns of white lines along the rock. She suspected that it wasn't a geological formation, but rather remnants of vegetation embedded in the cave, her team took some samples. Dr. Wadley examined the material using a microscope outside the cave. She learned that it was straw, mysteriously covered with ash. It would take more analysis to understand the full story, but Dr. Wadley was already putting together her own theory. After more studying was done, the research team learned that the white pieces of straw were a particular type of grass that grew outside of the caves, and the ash was charred camphor bush. Combined, the two substances provided a very basic need. Dr. Lynn Wadley proposed her theory that the grass was used to create a more comfortable sleeping experience on the hard cave grounds. The charred camphor bush is actually a practical method still used today in African households. When burned, camphor bush makes a great natural pesticide. The science behind it is that the ash repels crawling insects. Insects can't move freely through fine powder because it blocks their breathing and biting apparatus. Eventually, it leaves them dehydrated and running for life, creating a pest-free camp zone for the locals. Dr. Wadley and her team became really excited when they took to the scientific method of carbon dating. This would help them see just how far back in time these remnants of old-school mattresses were made. According to findings under carbon dating, the pieces of straw date all the way back to roughly 200,000 years ago. This made waves in the scientific community as it beats the all-time record for oldest bed. This bedding pales in comparison to the fluffy, high-tech mattresses we enjoy today, but it represents a milestone in human development. Wadley was eager to share her findings with the broader archaeological community. Still, she knew her work was far from done. With every new discovery, there is unfortunately always skeptics to fight back, but that's just the nature of finding the real truth. Many experts in the field felt that there was just not enough evidence that proves the abilities of people from so long ago. There's also a question of the precise date. Two human teeth were found near the bedding and threw some inconsistencies into Wadley's findings. One was about 200,000 years old, while the other was a mere 90,000. Some wondered if the bed was just a vestige of the more recent inhabitants' civilization. Carbon dating doesn't give you the most precise sense of an object's origin, so the record for oldest bedding is now up for debate. Dr. Wadley believes firmly that this is evidence of early humans creating the first beds, but even she wavers on how much it says about the people making it. The bedding doesn't really tell us anything about the complex cognition of humans, Wadley conceded. Regardless, the find provides insight into our ancestors, and at the very least it opens for a great debate of historic proportions.
and a hemisphere away, Wadley's fellow archaeologists unearthed an 800,000-year-old object that redefined the genetic history of these early peoples. While digging in the Atapuerca Mountains of northern Spain, a group of archaeologists discovered a deposit of 80 bone fragments in the dirt. At first glance, they appeared homo sapien in origin, though upon closer inspection, the researchers were stunned. Even our notion of which species evolved from which was rocked by these discoveries. While it was generally accepted that Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus, fossils found near Africa's Lake Tanganyika showed that these species actually lived side by side. The fragments they found were cut and butchered, indicating that cannibalism was practiced by these early humans. Homo sapiens, however, weren't known to cannibalize, leading the researchers to rethink their classification. They looked to Homo erectus as a possible match, though the fragments were still too different to have come from the species. DNA testing was the logical next step, and when the results returned, they were nothing short of historic. Some researchers believe the dating of the fragments indicated that Homo antecessor was more closely related to Neanderthals and Homo sapiens than to Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, sitting on the same evolutionary branch rather than preceding them. Calls for further study were made. DNA, while the backbone of our genetic code, degrades relatively quickly, becoming unreadable after just a few hundred thousand years. If researchers wanted to get to the bottom of Homo antecessor's place in the evolutionary chain, they'd have to look to something a bit bigger than DNA. This makes them perfect for genetic sequencing, which is why researchers turned to paleoproteomics, the study of ancient proteins, in 2020 during a new study of the fragments. Even with so many pieces to choose from, there was one bit of bone they were particularly interested in. A tooth. Well, more specifically, the enamel. Using mass spectrometry, which shows the mass of the molecules in a given sample, the researchers could trace the proteins back to the originating source and could finally read that valuable DNA. I am happy that the protein study provides evidence that the Homo antecessor species may be closely related to the last common ancestor of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, said study co-author Jose Maria Bermudez de Castro. The features shared by Homo antecessor with these hominins clearly appeared much earlier than previously thought. While this conclusion seems a logical one, the limited availability of data regarding Homo antecessor has left plenty of room for debate. With our only understanding of the species coming from scans of a single tooth, some researchers have chosen to accept these findings as simply a best guess. The only way to know for sure where Homo antecessor fits on the chain of human evolution is to uncover more remains, a realization that's led countless other researchers to the Atapuerca Mountains in search of the truth. Yet these mountains aren't the only place archaeologists should be looking.